This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 237, The Invisible Scripts That Guide Our Lives, by Ramit Sethi, by teachyoutoberich.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Living Daily, the podcast that brings you the best in personal development and productivity every day of the week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Justin Mollick. Hey, 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 welcome to Optimal Living Daily, the podcast or blogcast, where I simply read to you from the best content I can find to help you optimize your life. And I'm Justin Mollick, the kid who went door-to-door selling stuff in a catalog and spent the earned points on a magic set. I think I still have the rigged deck of cards from that, actually. Anyway, I'm back with a post from Ramit Sethi, but before we get into it, have you subscribed to this show yet? If not, please do. Once you're subscribed, you get new episodes automatically and you'll help the rankings of this show. Just hit the subscribe button in the podcast app of your choice and you're good to go. And with that, let's start optimizing your life. The Invisible Scripts That Guide Our Lives by Ramit Sethi of I'llTeachYouToBeRich.com I don't usually watch Bollywood movies, but when your Indian mom asks you to do something, including watching a movie, matinee of course, getting the mail from the mailbox, or buying her a car, you do it. Anyone with an Asian or Indian mother is nodding right now, fearful of the earth-shattering guilt trips that mothers have relentlessly honed over decades of surgical use and rigorous testing, and deservedly so. Anyway, as I was watching this Indian movie, I started realizing how many invisible assumptions it revealed about Indian culture. And then I took a step back and thought about the American movies I watch all the time, movies that also reveal a tremendous amount about our culture. These invisible scripts are so deeply embedded that we don't even realize they guide our attitudes and behaviors. For example, would a fish know he's swimming in water? Do Americans realize how many of their beliefs are pre-written by our societal values? For instance, in Indian culture, parents will sacrifice virtually everything for their son to succeed. In the movie, the poor parents have one air conditioning unit, which they give to their son while he studies. He goes on to a top technical college and is able to support them. Also in the movie, young Indian men put aside their passions for a stable job, which they can use to support their families. They have little interaction with women before marriage. Anything non-engineering or medical is looked down upon, and so on. We all nod, saying, ah yes, those passionless Indian automatons, until we look at ourselves. Where are the invisible scripts that govern our lives? Would you even be able to identify them? Myth, I don't have any money, so I can't go to college. I've recently started watching this awesome show, Friday Night Lights. For someone who hates sports, doesn't even know what sports season is, and still does not understand how football is scored, I am impressed with myself for watching this show. Anyway, it depicts a small Texas town and its love of football, blah, blah, blah. True to form, I ignore the football parts and focus on analyzing the meta messages. I know, I'm really fun at parties. Friday Night Lights explained a lot of things that have puzzled me about American culture. For example, in one episode, The dad spends his daughter's college money, prompting her to say, now I can't go to college. I was confused. Huh? You don't have money saved so you can't afford college? What? Unfortunately, this is what most Americans believe, that if you don't have money, you can't go to college. This belief is reflected in our culture, TV shows, our educational system, high school counselors, and even our businesses, banks that promote 529s with fear tactics. Of course, it's simply not true. If you don't have money, you can still go to college. My family didn't have any money and I went to one of the top universities in the country via scholarships. See how I won $100,000 plus of scholarships at IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com. But even if I hadn't done that, there were still many options. Student loans, no, they are not uniformly evil despite what everybody says. Grants, work study, part-time job, etc. In fact, the cultural script of no money equals no college is even more absurd when you actually know how college admissions and financial aid work. If you are poor, but you're skilled enough to get admissions, most top universities will pay for your entire education. This is why you should apply to the best universities you can, regardless of money. Yet Friday Night Lights reflects our cultural values, which are so deep-seated that we don't even blink. No money equals no college, of course. But that's just an assumption, like so many of the invisible scripts that guide our lives. What are three invisible scripts that guide you? Do you see the invisible scripts that guide our lives? Here are some others. I should follow my passions. I should hook up with a lot of people before I settle down. I work hard, so I deserve this nice apartment. My kids should take care of themselves after they graduate from college. Where did you go on vacation this year? 
Each of those is a uniquely American idea. Many other cultures would laugh, ridicule, and be utterly confused by those statements. Yet they're so deeply embedded in our culture that we don't even notice that they're assumptions. What are the top three invisible scripts that have influenced you? Hint, if you can't think of any, answer this. What are the top three invisible scripts that have influenced your friends? You just listened to the post titled The Invisible Scripts That Guide Our Lives by Ramit Sethi of I'llTeachYouToBeRich.com. That post has around 250 comments on it with many, many people sharing scripts that have influenced their own lives. I really think it's something to think about. And if you wanna share yours with me, feel free to get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. And one last quick reminder to please subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already and if you enjoy the show, it's a huge help. I think I'll leave it at that. Tomorrow's already Friday, so hang in there. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together will optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.